Ian Gary claims Kamaru Usman is ducking him. On Instagram, Usman wrote, I'm ready to slide. Ian responded saying, ready? Really? I thought you were built different, but turns out you and Kobe are more similar than I thought. Say yes. See you December 14th. Kamaru Usman responds to fans demanding that they drop the episode of Pound for Pound with Bilal Muhammad. Bilal claims that he got Usman so angry he tried to get physical. Usman fires back at Bilal and says they will eventually drop the interview. A lot of people have been saying, drop the Bilal interview, drop the Bilal interview, for drop sure. the... If, yeah. if Bilal yeah. Muhammad does win... Wait, wait. For, for, first of all, we, we see... I just want to say, we see that. First of all, I, I thank you. I... I I appreciate all you fans who are willing to come watch the show each and every week and definitely hitting us with your comments. We like it. I appreciate it. And yeah, for those that are wondering what, who didn't, you don't know what's going on or wondering what happened, what happened, what happened. Last time we were in Vegas, uh, of course, we had we had a lot of different guests, just like we have this time. There's a lot of interesting guests on. And out of respect, we wanted to have Bilal on the podcast to show our respect of course he was a new champion so to show our respect come on the podcast and he did come on the podcast yeah, but, that, but yeah but that shit was 180 typical, so my sure, thing is in typical will in that typical, 180 be shown in typical Bilal fashion of <laughs> course he Bilal did Bilal so the interview didn't go as planned it wasn't that great of an interview anyways it wasn't even that long but it went the way that it went and that was the biggest moment of his life because that's all that he seems to want to talk about. I haven't mentioned it at all because it wasn't that eventful, but that's all he seems to want to talk about all the time. But it is what it is. We hear you fans. And like I said, we we will definitely drop the interview if it's uh, we get really, really low on content. I mean, Damn. why not drop the, I mean, it, to be honest, I mean, it's the biggest moment of his life. That's why he talks about it every second. But <laughs> and if we do drop the interview, it'd be the second biggest moment of his life because it gives him relevance. It gives him a little bit of clout. Look, I was able to maybe tangle with the channel a little bit, which wasn't that eventful. But if he's able to get through uh, Shafka Rachmanov and we run super, super low on content, why not? Damn. Hamza Chamayev opened up on pulling out of his first scheduled bout with Robert Whittaker. On UFC Countdown, Hamza said we were in training camp. The first month was very good. The last three weeks, my immunity goes down. I don't know what happened. All these guys ate the same food, but only I got sick. I was in the hospital for a couple of days. I came out and started to train again, and the same shit happened again. The doctor said to me, you need to just be off from the gym and not just training, not doing nothing. I went home to the mountain. Paulo Costa and Jake Shields believe Robert Whittaker will have the edge the later the fight goes with Hamzat Chemaev because Hamzat gasses. Paulo also discusses returning to the UFC and who he'd like to fight next. Uh, Chemaev against oh, is he fighting? Uh, Whittaker. Oh, wow, it's a good fight. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, let's see. Let's wait this fight, how, how this goes, you know. Um, maybe, I, I, let's see, maybe can fight some, somebody yeah. that, of them. Um, Whittaker. We had a fight. Was mm -hmm. was a was a good fight. We won. Um, I won the fourth, very first round, and he won the second and third by the the Jude. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but it was a pretty nice fight, you know. Um, he's very qualified. Let's see. Let's see how how Gomez Chain gonna gonna act uh, against a, a high caliber. Fight uh, as Whitaker. Yeah, Whitaker's tough. He might he might smash him. That'll be interesting yeah. to see because he yeah. hasn't fought in any top yeah. top eighty five pounders. Yeah, I don't know how many rounds. I know this come main event, but I don't, I don't mm -hmm. know how many rounds it's gonna be. I think if just three, yeah, this is more equal. Five, I think more Whitaker. Let's see. Yeah, cause I think he gasses a little bit because like I said, so. Chimaya comes out just at a crazy pace, but he can't hold that for five rounds. No. So if he doesn't finish him like in the first round or two, I think I think Whitaker will. We'll gas him and fade him. Yeah, that's but yeah. like I would like to see you and Chimaya fight. Would you like to come back with a really tough fight or more of an easier warm up fight? Uh, bro, I always want to fight the most tough guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but you know, but you get paid the same. So sometimes it's I always wanted the toughest guys too. But sometimes I'm like, wait, you get paid the same to fight the easy guys? Yeah, <laughs> but if I start, I, I just. I just worry if I start to, to, to think on their way, if I will be like uh, more lazy. That's true. Sometimes you have an opponent that's not as good, you're not as motivated to train, and then you don't fight good. 
Johnny Eblen is not a fan of Donald Cerrone announcing that he's returning to the UFC. Eblen thinks that Conor McGregor is influencing other fighters to take time off to do PEDs. He went on to say, I just don't think it's a good idea to like retire, take a bunch of steroids, and then come back and fight again. It's not a good look, man. I think Conor paved the way, and I think he's influencing a lot of other people to do it. I think people are trying to fight past their prime and use all these substances, and it's just not natural. It's not good. Your brain doesn't heal from steroids, so all that CTE just adds up. I'm very against steroids. I'm very against people fighting past their prime. Eric Nixick says when Hayden Fajeda got in Francis Ngannou's face at the ceremonial weigh-ins, that woke Francis up. He says they were actually happy that Hayden did that. Speaking to MMAfighting.com, Nixick said it was heavy. I've never jumped a cage before, ever. My emotions were like, I just wanted to get to my guy. Dewey Cooper was like, damn, white boy. I've never seen you jump a cage like that. I went. I was gone. I was like, oh, shit, are we going to get fined? Like, I was so nervous, but in the moment, it's like, dude, I just wanted to hug him. That was all I kept thinking. Now I just want to get to my guy. I just want to hug him. I just want to tell him I love him. We met with the family, the extended family, and we had this kind of like private little room area, and everybody said a prayer. Everybody said a moment of encouragement to Francis. It was beautiful, bro. And then Francis spoke and he cried. He let out a lot of his emotion right before we left for the fight, and he said, this is for Kobe. And dude, there wasn't a dry eye in that room. We're all emotionally attached to the situation, and I couldn't be happier for him in the time of still grieving. It was an honor to be by his side. That dude, after the ceremonial weigh-in, that woke him up. He was like, all right, mother And he said that. We were there and he's like, the king is back. I'm going to show this guy what's up. I'm like, hell yeah. It had an energy to it and we were all kind of happy that Hanan did that. We were all kind of happy that he got in his face and whatever it did, it woke the giant up. We didn't really say much of anything. It was so weird because we won a world title on Saturday and it felt like the title didn't matter at all. I didn't even see the belt. Usually we're taking a picture with the belt and that was an afterthought. This was a win for Kobe. That was all we cared about was to get this done for Kobe. And once it was done, bro, honestly, we grabbed our shit and left. It was very different because I don't think the win can ever replace anything, if that makes sense. Later on, we were like, oh, we won a world title. It didn't even cross our mind. This is for Kobe. This is for our boy Francis. I didn't think he was ever going to fight again after Kobe's passing. I didn't think he was going to fight again. So for him to be able to turn around, then go out and perform the way he did versus a high level opponent, I couldn't be happier for him. On the referee stoppage, he continued, Dan Mergliata must have owed him money. It was right in front of me, like right to my left. And I jumped up prematurely because I thought, because I saw his body just go limp. And I'm like, all right, dude, he's out. It's over. And then Mergliata is just standing there still. The fight's over. And I went up to Dan. I was like, damn, early stoppage. He's like, I don't know motion. It was like one of those things like, F this, this guy's dead. Michael Chandler is training with Kamaru Usman in preparation for his upcoming rematch against Charles Oliveira. Chandler versus Oliveira goes down at UFC 309. Brian Ortega reacts to a bizarre voice message he received from a fan. Ortega posted this to his Instagram. He wrote, you guys never fail to entertain me. Just because I don't respond don't mean I don't be watching. Opening up a DM with T-City. <laughs> Look, I gave you a chance. I saw that you had posted saying you were going through some shit, getting surgery or whatever the <laughs> Time's up now. This is part two. Tell me you love me, or I'ma fly out to wherever the you is right now, T City, and I'ma diddle your little ass boy. You ain't never been <laughs> cage with a like me before. <laughs> I'ma pull down them braids and. <laughs> I thought they were Brennan Schaub went off on Nate Diaz on his podcast. Last week, Nate called Brennan a big p for crying on his podcast about the news of Shane Carwin struggling with CTE. Brennan says that Nate is fake and he will beat the shit out of him. The whole narrative, your entire narrative, oh, oh, the man. Bud, you've been paid more than 99% of the fighters. Cut the bull. Shit. You're no different than Kobe Compton's this MAGA. Shit. It's all fake, bud. You're not fooling anybody. I've seen how the sausage is made. You're not tough to me. I know tough guys. Tough guys don't get on the internet and tweet at another grown man who beat the out of them when they're crying or they're getting emotional because their friend of 20 years is having major issues, suicidal thoughts. That's That's the difference between you and I. 
I'm not some moron who buys into your tough guy narrative, but I don't give a f you're from Sacramento. That's your biggest thing? That's it? That's the narrative? I know tough guys from Sacramento. What are you gonna do, Nate? What are you gonna do? Volume punch me, mother That's what you're gonna do? What are you gonna do? Out grapple me? In what sense? What world are you living in? This is the real world. Now, if you're doing this because you fancy yourself a fisticuffs, if you fancy yourself, you want to actually grapple me, I'm not hard to get a hold of. Pull the f up. And you can show up with all your boys, do all that stuff. But what a real man will do is pull up one on one. I don't have a posse. I don't need one, bud. I'll drop my kid off at f***ing practice, roll over, twist your f***ing neck off, and then pick him up just in time unscathed with a Diet Coke. And that's how this goes for the rest of your f***ing life, bud. Whenever I want. Alexander Volkanovsky ran into Ilya Taporia, and it was all respect. What's up? Alright? Good? How you feeling? Alright? You good? Good, Lane? Yeah, everything's going good. This video is brought to you by Factor Meals. Eat stress-free with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from our weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also discover more than 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. Factor takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. So either use the QR code on screen right now or click the link in the description and use code FULLMOUNTOCT50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders. Kyle Bahayo says he's in talks with the UFC to fight Israel Desanya at UFC 312 in February. Speaking to MMA Junkie, Kayo said, I want to fight Izzy. We are in talks with the UFC, but nothing confirmed yet. But that's the fight we want. I think that's the fight that makes sense. Adesanya already fought all the guys from the top five. Just me and Nazardine Imavov, he didn't fight. But Imavov didn't have a good fight last time, so I think they're thinking about me. Let's see what the UFC wants. A lot of respect for Izzy, you know. I want to fight the best in the world, and I think he's a legend. One of the best in the world. I want to test myself against him. He was a great champion. He always has good points. I don't know if he's vulnerable or anything like that. I don't have anything with it. If we fought, I'm going with 100% power. I'm going with 100% trying to finish him, and I will do it. Hamza Chamayev responded to rumors that he is unable to travel to the USA and fight. Hamza says it's not true. He went on to say, I don't think so. A lot of people say a lot of different things. I've been to the USA. I can come to the US. A lot of things happened in my life, being sick, surgeries, so that's why I've not been fighting like before. Abu Dhabi being close to me, when I'm healthy, I just jump in and fight here. I've been in England, I've been in the UK, the US, I'm going to Australia soon as well in December. I can be anywhere, so I don't know who has a problem with me. People say a lot of different things, so I don't know. And that's going to wrap it up for the news. Thanks for watching. For daily MMA news and content, subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post videos. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one's from Palestine the Great. It says, let's not forget that Jones took almost three years off after relinquishing the light heavyweight title. No injuries, no suspensions. He sat there and waited for Francis to lose or leave the UFC. The second one's from Positive Vibes 532. It says, Costa is a troll, but he's no coward. And the final one's from Icy Hot 8873. It says, heavyweight is a complete mess. There are three guys at the top. One is fighting in a D-League promotion or boxing. One is ducking and has three minutes total in his heavyweight career. And the number one heavyweight in the world is relegated as the interim champ because no one wants to fight him. And the fourth in line is a French guy filming movies instead of fighting. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured in the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. And if you missed yesterday's news, click the video on screen right now to get caught up.